Good morning. Good morning. It is again a privilege and honor to be invited to speak here this morning. The title of our message is an election day sermon. Our scripture focus will be Joshua 24, verse 14 through 28, and I trust that everyone has a Bible open in front of them. The first election day sermon was preached in 1790 by a Reverend Foster in Massachusetts. Sermons back during this time period were oftentimes written out word for word. The pastor would preach it on Sunday, and then it would be turned over to the local nurse newspapers where it would be printed up so people could review it the next day. As I studied some of these election day sermons, I discovered it was less a political sermon and more of a call to accountability and remembering of who we are and who we truly serve. Therefore, I will neither mention or discuss candidates, issues, or parties this day. This message will begin and end with two statements. First, God is in control. Amen. Yes. And Amen. second, we must choose this day who we will serve. Yes. Let us pray. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, I just thank you for each and every person that is here this morning and those that will be listening online, Father God. I pray, Father God, that the words that will come forth will be from your throne of grace through this vessel and that each of our hearts will be touched this day. And that, Father God, you will renew a fire and kindle it deep within our hearts, Lord, to serve you in spirit and truth. And we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, the praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God is in control. Here's what the scriptures declare. Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 through 21. Praise the name of God forever and ever, for he alone has all wisdom and power. He determines the course of the world's events. He removes kings and sets others on the throne. He gives wisdom to wise men and knowledge to men of understanding. First, he alone has all wisdom and power. Second, he determines the course of world events. Yes. Third, he removes kings and sets others on the throne. And fourth, he gives wisdom to wise men and knowledge to men of understanding. God determines, God controls, God grants, God directs. And if God does all these things, where does man fit in? He, God, seems to have it all covered. Why does he need us? And the answer is simply, he doesn't. Yet God, out of his love, mercy, and grace for man, God has chosen to bring us into his process just as God first chose us and loved us before the foundation of the world, he who created us, he allows us the privilege to participate as his vessels in his plan as individuals, as a people, and as a nation. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 13 declares, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the suffering of Christ, keep on rejoicing so that also at the revelation of his glory, you may rejoice with exaltation. Yes. That's with great joy. Another translation reads, instead, be very glad because these trials will make you partners with Christ in his suffering. And afterward, you will have the wonderful joy of sharing his glory when it is displayed to all the world. John 14, verse 1 through 4, Jesus said the following, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way where I am going. Yeah. As believers in Jesus Christ, we know the way to go. Amen. First John 1 John 1.9 tells us that if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except by him. And Romans 10 verse 9 declares, if we confess with our lips that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, believe in our heart that he was raised from the dead, we will be saved. Jesus has secured for us forgiveness of our sin, redeemed us from death, and provided the way we are to follow. Make no mistake, God is in control. Amen. His law never changes. His word remains the same. 
Fear not. When the Lord says fear not, we are not to fear, for our hope is in Him, whatever may occur. Yeah. Dr. A.W. Tozer shares these thoughts along these lines. He says, quote, if the world's foundations crumble, we still have God, and in Him we have everything essential to our ransom beings forever. We have Christ who died for us. We have the scriptures which can never fail. We have the faithful Holy Spirit. Yeah. If worse comes to worse, here below, we have our Father's house and our Father's welcome. Amen. So fear not. God is in control. Amen. And that brings me to the second statement. Quote, we must choose this day who we will serve. Our scripture text for today, Joshua 24, verse 14 through 28. The setting of that scripture passage, Joshua is preparing to die. Joshua 23, 14 tells us that. Joshua is repeating the words of Moses to the people that God spoke throughout the book of Deuteronomy. In Joshua chapter 23, verse 16, Joshua summarizes that message in the following. We read, when, the transgression, when you transgress the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, then the anger of the Lord will burn against you, and you will perish quickly from the good land which he has given you. The warning is that punishment follows sin and disobedience, and blessings follow obedience to God and his word. Amen. Joshua 24, 1 through 13 recaps the history of Israel showing God's faithfulness and that that promise to be true. Remember Deuteronomy 8, 14, which we shared earlier with you in the month, warned us not to forget our history and what God has done, yes. lest we forget God. We are to remember all that God has done for us as individuals and as a nation and praise him for it continually. Amen. Joshua 24, verse 14, we pick up the narrative. It says, fear of the Lord, Proverbs 1, 7. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. It continues on to say, serve him in sincerity and in truth, not with double-minded or unrepentant hearts, but a heart that seeks after God, that Amen. desires righteousness and the truth that not only in their life, but to live their life in that truth. It continues on to say, put away the gods which were your fathers and served beyond the river, that being the Nile in Egypt, and serve the Lord. The gods, unquote, here are anything that we place before the one true God and Savior of us all, Jesus Christ. These, quote unquote, gods need to be put away. When I hear that phrase, put away, I think of when I was a kid. Remember, put away your toys, put away your clothes, put away everything. You heard it all day long. But it basically is a call to put things where they belong. And before we can serve him in sincerity and truth, God must be first on every list of the priorities in our lives. Matthew 22, verse 37, Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. We can be busy for God, but being busy for God will not fill a believer's life. Being busy with God will. Amen. A life filled with his word, his spirit, and service to God begins and ends by doing Matthew 22, verse 37. Yes. Loving the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, yes. and all your mind. Verse 15. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourself today whom you will serve. It is free will being talked about here. We've shared a message on free will before from this pulpit. It's the right to choose. Embraced within the body of our constitutional law, which provides us the right and a privilege to vote in our nation. Originally, in early America, there were four requirements to be able to vote. You had to be white, male, own property, and a member of the established church. That established church was the Christian church. Throughout history, quote, we the people have amended the Constitution as our nation has changed, removing and adding laws through our constitutional process. Those we have elected to be our voice in government, those chosen to serve are vessels God uses to accomplish these changes. In the early 1800s, the land ownership requirement and membership to the established church were removed by states. 
Post-Civil War, the 15th Amendment granted African-American males the right to vote. The 19th Amendment granted all women the right to vote. And the 26th Amendment established 18 as the voting age for all citizens. But throughout the entire process of American history, God has continually asked each generation of Americans the same question. Whom will you choose to follow? Who will you serve? And our vote is our answer to God. Amen. I'll say that again. Our vote is yes. our answer to God. Never take constitutional rights for granted. Our vote is a privilege, not permitted in many nations around the world or corrupted and mocked through history. Remember Saddam Hussein, the president of Iraq? Yes, the president, because Iraq was a republic with all its uh, trimmings and titles. It included free elections, elections where Saddam would receive 99.9% of the vote for re-election each time he ran, because the 1.1% who voted against him never voted again. He was a wolf in sheep's clothing. Under the disguise of a democracy, under the disguise of a republic, of all the trimmings, he was a dictator and a brutal one. A republic or a democracy takes hard work and vigilance by its citizens to make it work. Freedom takes hard work. It is not free. Citizens must be willing to work and fight to preserve it. Yeah. The voting process is a tool put in place to allow peaceful change of political office and power to occur, lest we face violent revolution. In fact, the word revolution means to change. In essence, we have a mini revolution every time we have an election and exercise our right to vote. Our right to vote is a serious responsibility, a duty that should not be simply cast, but exercised through knowledge of the issues, candidates, and through prayer to Almighty God. As a believer in Jesus Christ, those that we choose to cast our vote for must reflect an accountability to the truth of God's word in character, past and present, their daily practices, their lifestyle, what they declare as the truth in word from their lips and action in their life, and they must show a humble servant's heart. When I taught history for so many years, we came to this subject. I told my students, if you ever get a chance to talk and ask a question of someone running for office, here's the question you ask. Why should I grant my sacred vote to you? And if they answer anything other than to serve, don't vote for them because they're filled with power, pride, politics, and control. Wow. If they say to serve, then ask them who, what, and why. Press them. And if they can't answer or won't answer, they don't deserve your sacred Amen. vote. Amen. As a believer in Jesus Christ, professing Christians, if a candidate answers anything contrary to biblical beliefs, values, and principles, they do not deserve your sacred Amen. vote. Amen. I came across this quote from Mark Twain of all people, and it's good. He said the following, each man must for himself alone decide what is right and what is wrong, which course is patriotic and which isn't. You can't shirk this and be a man, and I'll add a woman to that statement. To decide against your conviction is to be an unqualified and inexcusable traitor, both to yourself and to your country. Let men label you as they may. Yes. There's a great deal of truth in that statement. I'd rather be a fool for Christ described by Paul Amen. on the road to heaven than a sinner in the hands of an angry God on the road to hell. Amen. Today, more than ever, getting clear answers to simple questions has become almost impossible and requires work for each voter to find that truth. However, the way forward to the truth has never changed. The way forward is always with prayer, the Bible, and turning to the one true God and Savior of us all, Jesus Christ, for the answer. When all the rhetoric, mudslinging, fake news, lies, accusations, and smoke screens are cleared aside, remember that God is in control. Amen. And on election day, your vote is either for God-fearing candidates who believe in Jesus Christ and the Bible, or for human rule by sinful man. Yeah. The poll says it's between 75 and 85% of Americans still identify themselves as quote unquote Christians. I wish that was true. If it was, we'd have nothing to worry about in any of our elections. But it's not. 
We need to be quote unquote witnesses as pointed out by God through Joshua in our text to not only the blind unbeliever, but also to those who call themselves quote unquote Christians. Let those who have ears listen. To vote against biblical precepts and principles, a man or a woman who stands for the truth, and instead to place a person, party, or platform before God and his word as a believer in Jesus Christ would be to an act of an idolatry, a denial of who yeah. Jesus Christ is. It's an act of sin according to God's yeah. word. James 4.17 puts it very simply. When you know what's right and fail to do it, for you it becomes sin. Yeah. Yeah. Choose this day who you will serve. Then there are those who say, my vote doesn't matter. It, I, it doesn't make a difference. I'm not going to vote. Your vote matters because every life matters to God. Every voice matters. Your voice, your vote, because our vote is a statement of what we believe and yeah. who we are willing to follow. We need to understand the gravity of each vote in each election. In 1831, the Virginia State Legislature as a bill before it to abolish slavery. This isn't the time before the Civil War when slavery is tearing the nation apart. The northern states have abolished slavery, the southern states retain it. Virginia is the largest slave holding state in the Union. If Virginia abolishes slavery, experts say that the rest of the South would have abolished it. That would mean that the four bloodiest years of the American Civil War that were fought on our soil would never take place. That means our nation would have settled that issue well before the first shot was fired at Fort Sumter. In other words, over a million Americans would not have lost their lives. Another million would never have been displaced. Brother fighting against brother. When the vote was taken, it missed passing by one vote. One vote. And what our nation had to go through as a result of that one decision. At the end of the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in April of 1865. Before he was assassinated, he met with his vice president, Andrew Johnson, and he explained to him his plan for reconstruction, which called for an easy restitution of the nation, forgiveness being part of the key part of it. When Lincoln is assassinated, Andrew Johnson under the Constitution becomes the president. But Andrew Johnson is from Tennessee. He's a Southerner. Many in the North can't abide by that fact, and they bring up charges of impeachment against him. They miss impeaching him by one vote. Uh, and Abraham Lincoln's policy for an easy reconstruction and not the punishment of the South yeah. is accepted and carried out. We need to understand the gravity of each vote in each election, not only in the presidential election, but right to the school board election. Every single election our vote is critical, our voice is critical. We need to be vigilant and active out there as Amen. citizens, but as Christians also to assure that the voices that are going to be making the decisions are voices that know our Lord and Savior, Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. And here now is Joshua before the people of Israel. And God is testing the hearts of man there, knowing their thoughts making them understand the gravity of their vote individually and as a nation. We pick up the narrative in Joshua 24, 15. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourself today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, which are beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It was so important to God that Israel understand the gravity of the vote that God had Joshua repeat the invitation not once, not twice, but three times. Follow along as we read through, picking it up at Joshua 24, verse 16. Joshua 24, verse 16. And the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods. You know that phrase, far be it from us, is really nonchalant. It's like we're tired of hearing it. Fine, whatever you want, we'll serve the Lord. But see what happens next as Israel begins to recite their history and what God has done. Something is going to change in them. Verse 17, for the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt 
from the house of bondage and who did these great signs in our sight and preserved us through all the way in which we went and among all the peoples through whose midst we passed. The Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites who lived in the land. The reciting of the history out loud, recalling what God had done so that we would not forget. Recall, we mentioned this before, there are those that want to destroy our history yes. and rewrite it. It's not they want to destroy America, they want to remove God from America, then yeah. that's the step that will destroy this country. That's their ultimate goal. And here, Israel, reciting out loud what God had done, then comes to their senses and they make a stronger statement. We also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Remember what Proverbs twenty two twenty eight said, we are not to remove the ancient landmarks which our fathers have set for us. We need to remember where and what, who we came from and where we are heading for the future. Joshua, under the power of the Holy Spirit, then confronts them further. God knows their hearts. Joshua said in verse 19 to the people, you will not be able to serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgression or your sin. And if you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done good to you. And people said to Joshua, no, but we will serve the Lord. But the Holy Spirit, knowing their heart, presses them further. Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen for yourself the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. Will you say that with me? We are witnesses. Again, we are witnesses. Witnesses to the unsaved and to the believer. Goes on to declare it. In verse 23, now therefore put away the foreign gods. This is repentance, takes action. Foreign gods which you are in your midst and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua for a third time, we will serve the Lord, our God. We will obey his voice. Yeah. The change in the wording, the change in the tone can come through the scriptures. You sense the people now understand the gravity of making this choice. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made for them a statue, a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. And he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, behold, this stone shall be for a witness against us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord, which he spoke to us. Thus it shall be for a witness against you, as, as so that you do not deny your God. Here's the stone. The word of God Amen. is what we will be measured by. The Holy Spirit will bring witness against us. What we do, what we say, yeah. what we think. And then Joshua dismissed the people, each to his inheritance. Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Here are two scriptural truths to remember when you vote. Proverbs 29, verse 2. When the righteous increase, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, people groan. Proverbs 14, 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. We face a critical crossroads in the history of the United States, but also the world. We stand as the longest existing democracy in history. We stand as freedom to the world. If this nation is allowed to fall to the wicked and evil leadership that is out there buying for it as we speak, the rest of the world will follow quickly. Yeah. Therefore, I beseech you, I beg you, Continue to fast and pray as we have taught. Read Nehemiah chapter 9. I'll repeat that. Nehemiah chapter 9 to guide you. And where the Bible recalls all God has done for Israel, 
replace it. Replace that area with the history of what God has done for you in our nation. Write it out if necessary. But when you pray it, speak it so you can hear it. And do all things with prayer and supplication and pray without ceasing. In closing, let me share some of the thoughts of our forefathers on the subject. And I'm going to end with an actual election day prayer that was prayed. George Washington, in his first inaugural speech on April 30th, 1789, said the following, quote, The preservation of the sacred fire of liberty and the destiny of the Republican model of government are justly considered as deeply, perhaps, as finally staked on the experiment entrusted to the hands of the American people. He's speaking directly of our power to vote. Abraham Lincoln, on January 27th, 1838, made the following statement, all the armies of Europe, Asia, and Africa combined could not by force take a drink from the Ohio or make a track on the Blue Ridge in a trial of a thousand years. At what point then is the approach of danger to be expected? I answer, if it ever reach us, it must spring up amongst us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. As a nation of freemen, we must live through all time or die by suicide. Amen. Remember, let it strike deep that God is in control and we have been given the tool, privilege, and responsibility to exercise that gift granted by God. Fulfill your duty as a citizen and a Christian. Let your declaration of faith be heard. Exercise your right to vote responsibly and share that witness to all around you. While it's important who is elected to any office by quote we the people, most important choice is choosing the one true God who rules over heaven and earth to rule over our hearts. Yeah. You see, there is one who is always appealing to the ballot box of your heart. That's Jesus Christ. Yes. The one who died for you, who was raised from the dead, and who sits at the right hand of God the Father interceding for all of us right now. Now, more than ever, we cannot afford to be without him. We must bow down to him. We must worship him. We must serve him. But first, we must choose him. Yes. Choose this day whom you serve. Your vote reflects your decision. Our vote as a nation will determine our future as Americans. And may we echo Joshua's words in the end. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Will you stand with me this morning? The following prayer was offered by the Reverend Peter Marshall, who was chaplain of the United States Senate from 1947 to 1949. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, we pray for all the people of our country that we may learn to appreciate more the godly and the goodly heritage that is ours. We need to learn in these challenging days that to every right there is attached a duty and to every privilege and obligation. We believe that and the eternal order of things thou hast so ordained it and what thou hast joined together let us not try to put asunder. Teach us what freedom is. May we all learn the lesson that is not the right to do as we please, but the opportunity to please to do what is right. Above all, may we discover that wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. May we have that freedom now in his presence here to lead us and to help us keep this nation free. And everyone said, Amen. Please remain standing. Remember that God is in control and choose this day who you will serve. I'm going to invite Frank back up to pray over the food in our fellowship time and perhaps any last instructions for the meeting. But make sure you vote and make sure you talk to your neighbors, your friends, and your family, Christian or non-Christian, and press upon them what this vote truly means. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.